Well, hello again. You're watching Brian Northmore Photography. It's my mission to inspire the photographic community by passing on my knowledge, passion and skills. I'm a photographic judge, lecturer, educator and workshop leader based in the United Kingdom. You can subscribe anytime. Hit the button or watermark and don't forget the bell icon for those important updates. And please don't forget to comment. But most of all, enjoy the video. Right, so hello again. Here we are once again in what seems to be my favourite spot, which is stood in my front garden. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, focus stacking today. Um, so it's something that I've covered before on the channel, but not quite in this way. Um, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to um, take you through the steps of focus stacking. From taking images out here in the field, or in the front driveway, should I say, right the way through to a finished image. So those key steps are going to be um, the camera setup, um, how I actually change the focus point and, and take those pictures. I'm going to go through the images um, in Lightroom and uh, select those and then we're going to go into Photoshop to finish the job off and then show you the final image at the end. Um, but before we do any of those things, we're going to go back upstairs, back up to the office and uh, I'm just going to explain to you why we focus that what's the whole point behind it and, and why do I do it. So let's go upstairs and have a look at that now. Okay, so here we are back in school, or more my version of school anyway. Um, the reason I wanted to do this bit before doing any photography was really to explain to you um, why we focus stack and, and what it's all about. And it comes down to basically one simple thing, depth of field. Now you can achieve changes to depth of field in various different ways and focus stacking isn't the only one. But first of all, we need to understand what depth of field is. So if first of all, we think about we have, um, we set our camera up and we are on um, in a field somewhere. So we've got a camera on a tripod very crude camera, very crude tripod. And right in front of us, we've got something that we want to photograph. It could be a person, could be a tree, could be anything it wants to be. So in this case, we're gonna have our tree. We've got a tree there up on the field. And behind the tree, we've got a cliff. Now we've got to choose what we're gonna focus on. At some point, um, it, it might be that we decide to focus on the cliff itself, we might decide to focus on the tree or, or, or some other point. But for argument's sake here, we're going to focus on the trunk of the tree. So we're going to focus right there. Now, depending what aperture we pick, depends on exactly how much of, of, the, of the scene is in focus. So for argument's sake, we decide that we want to focus on that. You, you pick an aperture that gives us focus between there and there. So everything in that area is now in focus. All of this is getting progressively blurred and the same at the front. Now we can move, we can change the aperture, which will change the depth of field, but it will also change the shutter speed. So imagine that coming off the top of here, we've got some water, we've got a waterfall. And we decide that we want a particular shutter speed because we want an effect on this. So then we can't change the aperture. So now we think we can change the ISO. Well, if we want to increase the ISO, that's okay. We can probably go up from 100 to 200 to 400 to whatever, but that's going to affect the quality. But we can't go the other way. We can't slow it down. So we're stuck with what we've got. So by using um, focus stacking, which means that we will focus here, 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 and here, progressively moving the focus point, we then take a number of images, which effectively all overlap, and then we join all those pictures together, giving us everything in focus. And now, back outside, that's what we're going to do and then we're gonna use Photoshop and Lightroom to do the magic that makes that happen. And that is what allows us to take pictures like these. I'll see you back outside in a minute.
Well, first off, I've got a bit of a um, confession. You'll probably notice that when I was out here last time, I wasn't dressed in a t-shirt. It wasn't quite so bright and sunny. There's a reason for that. Um, by the time I'd sorted out the camera last night, well, so I say the other night, it wasn't last night, it was a few days ago, and uh, set everything up, the light was really quite bad. And uh, to be honest, I couldn't really um, take a good picture. But the conditions in terms of being overcast were ideal. So today we've got a little bit more of a challenge. I've got a second confession. The second confession is that I've already just taken the photograph because it was a little bit more overcast just now. And uh, I couldn't take the time out to, to blog and uh, sorry, vlog and uh, do the photograph at the same time. So I've already taken the pictures, but I'm going to explain to you my setup and what it is what I've done. So I've got the um, shield around the bluebells um, over against the side over there. Um, I finally sort of like decided, sorry you probably can't see me there, um, I've decided on this um, composition um, of the three in a diagonal arrangement and uh, I've, I've set it up with the shield around it so that I hope it doesn't blow away with the shield around it so that it actually um, holds them in position. I'm just going to put something on it so it stays put. Okay, okay. I'm back. I feel a little bit better now. Um, so that just basically holds it in place now. Um, what it's also doing is cutting down the direct light on the flowers and keeping that sort of soft gentle feel that I wanted to have because the sharp light, the harsh light is just too much. Anyway, what we're around here to look at today really is focus stacking. So the camera is set up in manual mode, um, manual focus, manual exposure. You don't want any of those things changing during the stack. And uh, how it basically works is really quite simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you a little bit closer in to the setup and a little bit closer into the camera, and uh, then I'll be able to show you what it is we're um, what it is we're actually doing. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see me or or, or whatever, but in terms of um, what I'm actually going to be doing inside the back of the viewfinder, I'm going to be focusing on maybe here. Um, to start with and that will be where our first exposure is but I also our, our first um, frame focus to but I also want these flowers in the background to be sharp as well and with a shallow depth of field um, you're not going to get that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this flower I'm then going to gradually move the focus ring bit by bit ever so slightly by hand until this one has gone through focus and out of focus the other side and that will be our stack finished. And I think I'm going to probably, because it's close-up photography, not macro photography, so I think we're probably only going to need about five or six pictures to do this. I always take a few extra just in case, and then I've got them if I need them. Okay, so hopefully you can see the top of the camera now, or the top of the, um, the lens anyway. I'm hoping this is coming out. I'm not going to see it until I get it into video editing. Um, basically, um, what I've done is I've set up the exposure, I'm in live view, I will be in live view, there we go, and I've set the lens on focus point on the first flower. And what I do is I just wind it past it a bit, just so that I can get a rough idea of where I'm going to be working between. So anywhere between there and about there which is just inside the range of the lens and I know I want about five or six in that stack just to give me the, the the changes that I need so what I need to do now is to take those pictures so using the cable release so we just take the first one one two three four five six well I should have said when I did my um, original ones just now which I'm going to use for the edit because it's a little bit the lighting was a little bit better then I actually put my hand in front of the lens um, and I and I did that just to just to mark the beginning and the end of the scene 
so that if I if you if you know if my my picture of my hands on the screen, then that's the beginning and the end of that stack. Okay, so looks like I've got all the pictures that I need. Um, now we just need to edit them and uh, see how they all turned out. So let's see you upstairs again in the um, editing suite. Right, so, okay. Um, welcome back into the office again. Now if it gets a little bit noisy later on, it's probably because I've got a few children running around and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So, um, quick syrup of coffee. And we're on it. So to speed things up for you, what I've done is I've already sort of like pre-sorted um, the images and loaded them up into Lightroom, color coded them and selected them so that you can um, get an idea of what it is I'm trying to do. I'll quickly go through it with you. Basically, the green ones are ones that I edited last week for um, a, a, a trip, a trip tick or something that I was working on. Um, the purple ones are um, the ones which I've selected to use to edit for this composition so what we can do is i can filter by color so we get rid of all the others we've just got the purple ones left and i've actually flagged the ones which i'm going to um, work on now quickly um, what this gives me then is a very basic screen to look at and what you can see right here is you can see all the um the two end stopping ones so when i'm out in the field and i'm doing a photo stack or um, a panorama or something i'll put my hand up to the lens just to say that's the um that's where the start is and that's where the end is and that gives me my, my starting and finishing points so where we are now on the screen um i need to edit one of these um to give me a rough starting point for when i get into photoshop later on i'm going to do very minimal because i want to i don't want to change the the, any doing any lens corrections or anything because I want the images as true to what they came out of the camera as possible so that when I merge them together it, it's got the best chance of getting it all right so what I'm going to do is we're just going to pick one of them to, 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 to edit and we're going to go into the develop module now what we actually want to do though is we want to synchronize the edits that we are going to do across all of the images so if you just follow this through with me for a minute it's quite important so we come down to the bottom left hand of the screen and we're going to select all of those images. So all of those images which are highlighted will now be edited in exactly the same way. And over on the right hand of the screen, I'm going to tick this sync button. And what will happen then is when I edit one of these images, the edits will be taken across all five of those pictures. The edits that we're going to do are going to be very, very basic. All I want to do is make this look um, high key so that when I um, eventually put them into Photoshop, I haven't got to do too much work to it because I want it to be a high key white background, similar to what I did last week um, with, the, uh, with, with the triptych images. So um, let's have a look at that. So I'm going to move the exposure up. In fact, I'm, in fact, I've changed my mind. Hold that thought, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the white point. So white point is going to go up. Set the white point, move that up towards about there. I think it's probably as far as we can take it. Move the black point back down to about there. It's probably as far as I can take that. I'm going to take the exposure up very, very slightly, if it'll let me. Just until it starts to blow those highlights. And that's as far as we're probably going to go with these images. And you would have seen on the screen that it flashed up that it's edited five images. So absolutely fantastic. Because now when we actually go back into the library, we're quite happy that all these images have been edited in exactly the same way. Now what we want to do... Um, is we want to ensure that these are all selected again because what we're going to do is we're going to edit these inside 
of um, Photoshop. Sorry, we're going to edit these. Yeah, we're going to edit these inside Photoshop. So we're going to go up to Photo. And we're going to go Edit In. Open as Layers in Photoshop. So when we click on this, it'll open all these up inside of Photoshop for us as a stack of layers. And then we can go through the process of um, blending and merging them together. So whilst the computer is doing that, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. And I'll see you in Photoshop in a moment. Okay, and this by magic here we are back inside um, Photoshop. So I, I jumped it then because it takes a little bit of time to load the layers up depending on um, your computer and how fast it is. So without waiting around anymore, let's dive straight back in and get onto the screen. So have a look. So what we've got now, if you look down in the bottom right hand side of the screen, we have got the same image number loaded in as separate layers and each one of these layers has got a different part of the picture which is in focus and what we want to do now is actually blend these together so this is like a two stage three stage process i suppose depending how you look at it so once again we are going to select all those images we're then going to go up into edit at the top of the screen and we're going to come down to auto aligned layers so when we're in auto align layers, we don't really need to worry about any of this, okay? We've not done, we're not looking at any perspectives or collages, we don't want to reposition anything, we're not bending around any spheres or cylinders. It's just a basic projection and alignment of these layers, one on top of the other. I'm not going to put any vignette removal or geometric distortion or anything on it. I'm just going to go for what I've got here. So we're going to click on OK. Now, once again, Photoshop is going to dive off into um, Cyberworld inside itself and take a bit of time to line the. <clears throat> OK, so after what seems like an eternity, Photoshop has actually finally um, finished putting these layers together. Um, I've got the um, crop tool open already. Um, but if you can see just down the side, left hand side here where I've got the mouse, you can just see the edge of the background. It also looks a little bit strange just down at the bottom of the screen here as well. And that's basically where um, it, Photoshop's moved the layers about a little bit. And um, it's left some areas at the edges of the frame which are um, not right, shall we say. So we're just going to manually um, crop those in. So I can just bring that in a fraction there, look. And I'm just going to bring this up from the bottom oh moving the layer instead let's just undo that let's crop tool so let's bring that up a bit bring that in a bit we'll just do the other edges as well we've got a little bit of space to play with so we'll just do that oh look and it is at the top it needs it as well so once we've done that we just tick it and what it's going to do then is crop those images down now it's got rid of all those um, edges that we that we wanted to lose, but we've still got all the layers here. So now it's just a matter of selecting all those layers, going back up into Edit, coming down to Auto Blend. So Auto Blend Layers. Once again, you know, it, there is options there to do a panorama or a stack. Normally it will select um, the right one, but obviously for what we're doing, we're not on stack images. Seamless tones and colors. We want it all blended nicely together. Content aware fill for transparent areas. We don't, well, yeah, we'll have that. If it just sort of lines things up and things aren't quite right, it'll try and cover up the map, cover up the, the little mistakes and the errors for us. So we will click the button again. And then once again, for an eternity, wait for um, Photoshop to do its thing. So um, whilst it's doing that, I'm just going to, I've already loaded up um, the other file that we were working on. So I'll let it finish its job and then um, we'll be skipping into the final image in a minute and I'll show you the other edits that I've done. Okay, so there we are. Finally, we are here with a fully blended image. And um, if you look at it now, you can probably tell that it is all a lot sharper. So let's just turn off some bits and pieces a minute and we'll just have a look at what we actually gives us. So what it's done with our original um, 
uh, panel down on the right hand side you'll now see that all these are here but they've all got like a mask beside them so basically what it's done is it's created a jigsaw out of the image to put together what Photoshop believes are the sharpest parts of the picture to build a complete one up and then what it does then is it actually leaves us with one merged file which we can apply our fav our final edits to so let's get rid of all of that we don't need to save it because I've already um, done it before and we'll open up our final image now what I've done is I've collapsed down the layers so I can open them up for you one at a time and explain to you what it is I'm doing with them so here's our original masks um, all safe in the bottom for posterity just so you can see what they are and then in the layer group above we've got all our our edits that I've done to the image it's quite a simple edit really so here what I've done is I've um, created a slightly larger um, canvas size because I want a, board, a white border around the outside of the image and on the top of that I've um, got the original unedited well the original file not you know um, version before I apply any more edits so that's gone on the top of that and then what I did we, we'll come to here we'll come to color effects pro so I did a bit of work in color effects pro um, which has brought out some of the highlights. I actually put a little bit of softening and glow on it as well just to soften the highlights and uh, very very subtle but it makes a slight difference. A bit of hue and saturation. I don't know if you can see that or not but the idea behind it is it just tones down some of the brightness and some of those greens which I think was a little overpowering for the image. And then the curves adjustment just to give it that real sort of light airy high key effect that I wanted it to have. Um, and that guys is the finished image so I'm going to um, put the final image up on the screen now and let you have a look at that okay so um, I hope you enjoyed um, today's video I hope you found it useful um, hopefully it will give you some guys um, some things to try and have a look go at yourself um, nothing more to say really other than if you did enjoy it then please obviously give it a thumbs up um, I'd love to hear your comments as well and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel there's a lot more content to look at then please um, subscribe and uh, most of all I want you guys to stay safe but I also want you to um, be creative and enjoy your photography I'll see you next time